Hi everybody. I am so excited to be able to share with you something that will be coming up in March. I am creating a digital course called the Periodic Table of the Elements. Now last week I taught this course and I had so many students that came for it and they loved it. And one thing I felt kind of bad about was I didn't have time to finish a fraction of what I had created for this course. So in this digital course, which I hope to release in March, you will be able to see all the experiments and all the um, observations that will be in this class. And it's amazing. Now, you might be wondering what age of students should enroll in this digital course. Well, last week I had a couple of kindergartners and I also had a few 16 and 17 year old students and nobody was bored and nobody didn't like what I taught. And because everything I do is hands-on, there will be lots to do for any age group. So I would say uh, if your child is anywhere between first grade and 16 years old, 17 in high school, there is gonna be a lot in here that they will benefit from. So um, I wanted to tell you that. Also, I have some books I would recommend that you purchase before you get the digital course or when you get the digital course. I'm not adding books in my packet of supplies, but this is an Osborne book. One of my moms sells Osborne books and her child reads this at night before she goes to bed with her daddy and she already knew so much about the periodic table that it was a really great lab for her. It's got all these flip up things. Highly recommend this Osborne book. I also recommend this book. It's called Your Guide to the Periodic Table by Gil Arbuthnot. And <clears throat> you might be able to get this out of the library, but it's even for older kids, there's so much to learn from this book. So I really liked it. Then I have this book, which is by Jeannie Fulbright, and it's called Exploring Creation. Now my grandson Gabe and I are going through this book, and this is kind of what gave me the idea to teach this class. Because as I was working with Gabe, on the periodic table, I thought, I have got to teach this class. This is just too exciting. And believe me, that doesn't sound like me because I took chemistry in college and I hated it. But I, I had organic chemistry and regular chemistry and the teachers that I had didn't make it exciting. But believe me, we are gonna have fun in this class. And I'm going to explain it in such a way that your children will not be afraid of chemistry and they will grow up loving it. Now, this is a really interesting book by Theodore Gray. And Theodore Gray um, is one of the experts on the table of uh, the periodic table of elements. In this book, at the back, there is a, uh, a poster that you can take out and laminate. I took mine to Staples and had it laminated. But every page is so fascinating. It goes through all the elements, and there are about 103 of them. 92 elements are found in nature. And so he highlights just some of the interesting things about each element that is, um, is so unique and different about each element. I got these cards on Amazon. And they're actually periodic table flashcards. There's 118 of them. And it's a great way for your children to learn about all the elements individually. And um, it's taken after the game Solitaire, which is what Dmitry Mendelov used to uh, formulate the periodic table. The last group in the periodic table is called the noble gases. And noble gases are helium, neon, xenon, argon, uh, maybe a couple other, but it's in group number 18 of the periodic table. And kids love these noble gases, helium, 
as well as uh, these glow-in-the-dark lights or little bracelets that I can put on. And I'm going to put one of these in the teaching packet to get them excited about the noble gases and help them to learn that the noble gases all have a different frequency of light and all look like different colors. So in this class, we are going to start off with studying Dmitry Mendeleev and how he actually came up with the idea to put the, all the elements which he knew about at the time, which were about between 57 and 63 elements, but scientists did not know how to organize them. And so he came up with the table of the elements, and he did it in a dream. And he also played solitaire, and between the game of solitaire and his dream, he created this table, which is so wonderful. So we're gonna learn about him. We're going to create a 3D model of an atom and we're gonna learn about atomic weight and the different atomic numbers for each of the elements. And they'll be able to make some 3D models of the element. They're also going to get a worksheet where they will make some Bohr models of elements. They'll learn about electrons being negatively charged, protons positively charged, neutrons are neutral, and they'll learn about the nucleus and structure of an atom. Then after that, we are going to teach them how to read the periodic table from um, left to eat to right with the periods, there's seven periods, and they'll learn about the 18 groups in the periodic table of the elements. And they'll learn about the similarities of the elements in each group. And that is fascinating, how they're similar, but they also go up in number and Dmitry Mendeleev came up with this uh, amazing way to, um, to structure all the elements. So we're going to highlight some elements. Um, one of the things they're going to get in their teaching packet is some protective eyewear. They're also going to get this little battery um, operated light in order to test to find out if an element is able to conduct electricity or not. Now, if I can get this right, I'm gonna hook this up and you'll be able to see this light up. This is a really great way for students to check for conductivity. Did you see that light go on? Okay. So they're gonna put some of the elements in here to see if they conduct electricity. So this is a really, really cool little thing. They're also going to get an invisible ink pen because cobalt, one of the elements, is used in invisible ink. Kids love this. They're also going to get, I hate to say it moms, but I made silly putty. And they're gonna get a little chunk of silly putty along with directions on how to make more. Kids love silly putty. Now I thought, oh, this is gonna be way too um, silly <laughs> for a 16 year old boy but I'll tell you what those 16 and 17 year old boys they had more fun with a silly putty than the younger kids did I had one little boy who wouldn't take it out of the bag he didn't want to touch it but silly putty is great and you can make it in different colors and mix it together and wind it up together it's, you can make balls out of it and throw it but they're gonna get some silly putty in their packet and lots and lots of directions for more experiments. So this is kind of a one-stop shop for the periodic table of the elements. And I hope I will make all of your children and all these students crazy about the periodic table of the elements so that when they walk into their high school science lab or their college science lab and they're told they're gonna to be studying this, they will not be afraid they will absolutely love it, and their teacher will be shocked at how much they know at such a young age. So that's it for the introduction. I hope to have this digital course done by March, along with all the products and the packaging. So you be looking for new updates on that, and even if you came to my class last week and you think that they learned everything, 
Believe me, we didn't touch the half of it. So I'm so excited to create this course because we're going to go in depth and they're going to learn more than they ever expected. So that's it. I hope you um, keep an eye out for this course that's coming out and you'll be informed when it's ready. Thank you. Bye.